Today we will learn how to draw an igloo and an Anuksuk sculpture. I started with this horizon line. So this sort of wavy line across my paper, it's a little bit higher than the middle. And I have a lot of space on the ground here to draw my sculpture, my igloo. And then this above the horizon will have the sky. I will be using blue and brown to add some color to my picture. I'm going to start with an igloo. So make a tall curve. Igloos are actually taller than they are wide. So a big curve and then you can have kind of a little curve on the bottom to make it look round. Next, I'm going to put a doorway in here. So I'm going to start from the bottom of my line, make another little curve. And then outside of that curve, so not inside, but outside, copy that rainbow line, copy that curve. So this doorway would be how people enter and exit the igloo. And now we're going to put the ice blocks on here. So igloos are made of snow and ice, and that actually helps people stay warm instead of using stones. So they use ice. And I'm going to make the, it's called the keystone on the top. So the keystone is uh, would be the piece right on the top of this arch. The arch is this curved line. And I made two straight lines connecting it and then I'll keep making some straight lines that connect this rainbow kind of a line. Now it looks like someone stacked ice blocks to create this arch. And then for the ice that's going to make up this part of the igloo, what I'm going to do is continue these lines to the edge of the igloo. So I continue that one, I'll continue this one all the way around. It's okay if these lines are not even. And now I can't continue these lines, so I'm going to kind of invent some new lines. So the people who built igloos built the igloos from the bottom up. So I'm drawing my igloo from the bottom up. But they didn't use big round pieces of ice. They used individual building blocks. So what I'm going to do is draw some vertical lines. Vertical lines go up and down, starting with this bottom row. So I made one vertical line, make some space, make another one. This is going to end up looking like bricks. So I'm going to alternate and stagger this line. So I'm gonna draw another line starting from the middle. So I'm not aligning it with that other line. I'm drawing it from the middle between the two lines, between these two lines, I'll draw another one. Between these two lines, I'll draw another one. So I'm going to continue that pattern all the way to the top. So find the space between the two lines I just drew. Be about here. Go up. Find the space between, draw up. You'll do that all the way to the top. Uh-oh, so I kind of ran out of space. What I'm going to do is where I left off, I have this really big piece of ice. I'm going to make even lines. So even spaces, evenly space these lines out. I'll do that for this one. And I can put these lines between where those bricks of ice would be. 
continue that pattern going all the way up. So this looks just like bricks on a house or on a building. It's the same pattern. And this creates a really strong structure so that this doesn't fall down. And then at the top, you just connect those. Okay. Then on this side, this looks a little weird because it doesn't follow the pattern. So I'm going to find the space in between and draw some lines. Right there. That looks about good. This one I can color in with my blue. The ice is going to reflect the color of the sky. So if this is reflecting the color of the sky and I'm using blue, I should probably color in the sky blue too when I'm done. Coloring lightly. colored lightly on the igloo and then on the inside of the igloo I'm going to color in more dark. That'll look like it's dark inside the igloo. It is a little bit darker in there. It makes this look more realistic. So I can color in the sky with my blue. I'm not going to color the whole thing because I'm going to add an Anukshuk right here. So it looks like it's going to be far away. It's in the distance and it'll help guide us somewhere, maybe to the water, maybe to our other people. Um, I'm going to start by drawing from the ground, so from the horizon up. I'm going to make two kind of flat ovals, so rounded on the top and bottom, but kind of flat on the sides. And I'm going to put those next to each other. Those will look like the legs of the Anuksuk. And then I'm going to put a stone, so another flat oval, connecting the top. So I'm drawing, I drew a line, touching the top of those two ovals, round it on both sides, connect it with another straight line. And you can stack multiple stone shapes. So I'm making like a curved edge, flat on the top. And then don't forget, these have arms and a head. So I'm gonna make one long piece it's going to be pointing toward this way. And a large stone for a head. And I'll color that one in brown because they use stones for this. So brown or gray, whatever stone colors you want to use. And if these shapes are irregular or look kind of strange, that will help your picture look more realistic because stones are irregular shapes. And I'll finish my sky. Don't forget to make your sky go all the way to the horizon. And if you want to, you can draw a person here. So I'm going to draw an Inuit person. So a person who would live in the igloo, the person who built this Anukshuk statue. So these are the people who live way up north, starting with a big round head shape. And that's not just their head that's going to be their hood of their coat. So I'm going to put another circle in here and then add kind of a zigzag circle shape. 
So zigzag in a circle. That looks like fur to keep them warm. You can add a little smile inside, some eyes. I'm gonna add two arms. And I'll give them some hands. I'm just gonna add a little line there. This will be their mittens to their coat. I'm adding the bottom of their coat. And then maybe some snow pants, right? It's cold outside. You probably wear some snow pants. And boots. Get some good winter boots so they don't get cold. And I'm all done. I can color this into, in the story that we listened to, the Inuit people were wearing brown coats and pants. They were wearing furs from animals that they hunt. So when you skin an animal and remove the fur, the, these animals will usually have brown skin. To turn it into leather. So I'm going to make it kind of realistic and color it in with my brown crayon. Plus brown and blue, I think those two colors go very nice together. I'm going to leave some parts of this white to look like maybe white fur of a rabbit or maybe a polar bear. Because these people that live up the cold climate, they do hunt animals and they use parts of their skin and fur to survive. Coloring him in. And I'll color in his face a little bit too. And I'm all done.